my soul power. Hey guys, Matt Waldron here from Ice Hole Power. Say, this holiday season, if you're looking for a gift for your loved one that's into the outdoors, a great option for them is this Ice Hole Power Box. This model right here is the Bad Mofo. They have models all the way from small single battery packs all the way up to this guy. This guy has speakers in it. It's got two lithium batteries in it, so it's super lightweight, yet it's gonna give you enough power on the ice to light up all the lights in your ice house and charge all your accessories it also has a voltage display on the box and it's got nice power outputs to it too so if you let's say are running a GPS on a snowmobile or four-wheeler you can power it right off this power box and you're good to go they have do-it-yourself kits and instructional videos on how to make these yourself so if you have a guy that really likes to just build things himself this is a great option for you check them out today oh what's up I'm just clearing off the desk uh, what's going on, folks? Smackdown Outdoors podcast, the regular episodes, <laughs> not an ice fishing show. What's up, Jack? How you doing? Um, yeah, so welcome to the, the Smackdown Outdoors podcast. I'm Doug Glimmervine, your host. Tonight, we got Justin Greco from Seasons Tackle going to join us here in a little bit. Uh, but first, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the ice fishing show. Um it was a success. I after everything, I can say it was a success. We what are we over 160 thousand views? A ton of money spent. Jason and Pete checking in. What's up, guys? Um, do me a favor and share this because what we are doing is in about two weeks. I think I think we got two weeks left. Uh, if you share, we're actually giving away a seasons tackle box mystery box from seasons tackle so go ahead and share this and you get entered into win just make sure that you share it publicly uh what's up stephanie how you doing uh, but yeah the show was a success there were a few minor glitches but nothing we couldn't really get over uh or nothing people could deal with you know some audio issues some video issues with the wi-fis and stuff but uh we we got through it we got through it okay and Yes. I'm going to answer your question. Yes. Plan on it next year. And we do have a date. Um, should, do you guys want to know what the date is? Do you guys want to know what the date is? We'll, we'll leave it up to them. You guys out there, if you want to want to know what the dates are, but we are going to do it again. That is right. Uh, Alan, what's up? Jack, Curtis, Tony. Hi guys. Uh, but it was a success, man. All the vendors loved it. Vendors made money. I got some emails with some dollar figures and I was like, Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. Um, but it was great. All the vendors showed up. Um, I want to do a giant shout out to all the vendors and even a bigger shout out to, uh, Thorn brothers, clam and glacier for being sponsors of the event. They took a chance and they believed that we could put on a good show and they were all happy. So, yeah, so thanks to the uh, sponsors, thanks to the vendors, thanks to all the people that actually were showing the products too. Uh, greatly appreciate that. They all, some people were were rushing uh, different places trying to get a better Wi-Fi connection at the last minute and this and that and the other. So very, very, um, very appreciative of everybody that helped and for you all that came out and uh, and joined us. So we will be doing it again. Let's see. Patrick says no. <laughs> uh, speaking of Patrick, um, Patrick and Dale, Patrick from the Lone Angler podcast, Dale from the Full Scale Outdoors podcast, they were co-hosts with me, and I want to thank them, too, for being here, helping out beforehand, getting everything, um, you know, all situated and scheduled and this and that. Tons of tons of work. Um, so thank you guys very, very much for joining me. It was uh, an honor to have you guys with me. So Kurt says no date, no date yet. What's up, Chris? Todd Allen says broke my wallet. Well, it was funny because like we're sitting there and we'd be talking to somebody and all of a sudden one of us would pull out our wallet and put it on the table. That was our cue of like, yep, we're buying it. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, Alan got my Burtek ice wheel covers on today. Super easy. Just follow the directions. Awesome. Yeah, Burtek ice are great people. I've known them for a long time. Carrie and Mike Westfall. So, 
Uh, yeah. So with that being said, um, we're back to regular scheduled shows, so you don't have to worry about. I'll I'll apologize too if anybody had a problem with your news feed completely destroyed. Um, to all the Facebook group owners out there that let it go and just let it be shared, I appreciate it. The vendors appreciate it. I know it was a lot of that all weekend long, um, but you don't have to worry about it for a while. So we are not uh, not going to be doing a spring show. Um, too many companies, not enough time, and open water isn't as niche and gadgety, I guess, if you want to say it, as ice fishing is. Um, I sat down and just off the top of my head came up with a list of 100 vendors in about 10 minutes. And unless we do it for literally like a week, it just wouldn't be enough, I don't think. Um, so we're going to stick to the ice fishing. We're just going to stay in our lane, do that uh, once a year, and be done with it. So there you go. Dang it. I wanted to get some get kicked from some Facebook groups. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Curtis Funk, I need nothing, and you got me to spend money. Uh, hey, I still have things showing up. I've got some other stuff uh on the way and yeah it, it was expensive running that show because my wallet hit the table a few times so um but yeah so we're gonna definitely do them in in again the ice fishing show again um it's going to be earlier and just because we don't want to compete with the shows we want to be an accessory to the show so so there you go i'll give you that much of a hint i guess we're not Maybe we'll maybe by the end of the show we'll we'll release the dates. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what uh, what's going on. Derek, I'm patiently waiting for my new game changer sweatshirt to get here. Yeah. So if okay, so I got bored and I got a merch store. If anybody cares, uh, I can drop the link somewhere. I don't know. Just scroll through the news feed and you'll see it. I made a hashtag game changer sweatshirt. It's just hashtag game changer. Got the logo underneath it. So. If you want to support the show, go ahead and buy one. I got a couple other designs up there, and I'm working on some more. Uh, I'm going to do kind of like once a month, drop a new design, and then uh, I'm working on hats too, so we'll do that. Sarah was super impressed with the customer service and shipping time for the weekend. Awesome. And Sarah, I believe, she was the one that won the trip with Dale to go fishing, so there you go. Uh, I got to order my carp shirt still. Yep, there's a carp one. If you're a real fan of my show and the flight companion on Dale's show, Full Scale Outdoors Podcast, you know. Uh, let's see. I think earlier makes a lot of sense because people think, yes, yes. It's going to be definitely earlier than the actual St. Paul show. So we'll, yeah. So we're going to, we're definitely going to do it again. Um, we're kind of taking the month off from working on anything, but once January comes, we'll start working on stuff and getting everybody buttoned up and whatnot. So we'll start working on it and a lot of improvements, small, minor improvements that are going to make for a better show. So there you go. All right. Well, my guest tonight is Mr. Justin Greco, and he's the owner of Seasons Tackle. Um, if you watched the live show don't worry we're not just going to cover nothing but seasons tackle he also is a fisherman and a and a chef and all sorts of stuff so we'll talk a little bit about everything um but yeah so he's justin greco seasons tackle and and we'll carry this over from uh from the live show hey justin if you're ready give me a big old thumbs up awesome what's up justin how you doing good how's it going Good, good, good. Can I let uh, make sure everybody can hear him okay? Just let me know. Go up, down, side to side, all that good stuff. Well, th thanks for joining me, buddy. Pleasure here. Thanks for uh, for having me. It's been a uh, it's been a crazy couple of weeks since the show. We uh, yeah, we were pretty game busters. It was uh, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, no, it was uh, very interesting to see. Um, you know, I was kind of like, how much are people gonna actually buy? And then as the show went along, we kind of were talking, you know, in between um, segments and it's like, well, people are at home or doing whatever. They got their phone in one hand. I'm pretty sure people were like online or on their spouse's phone or whatever, ordering stuff. So, <laughs> you know, we got people that we got people that were like, yep, just ordered it, just ordered it, just ordered it. And, and we're like, and we were telling some of the vendors like, well, you got some orders literally right now. So get your shipping department ready, you know? Um 
so that was good. Yeah. And, and yeah, so like I said, some of the numbers we had come through, were like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy we did that. And I'm very happy that, you know, you vendors made up some at least from not having these shows. Yeah. You know, you think they're going to do the spring show? Like they're going to have people there. What, what are yeah. your thoughts on that? I will, I, I, I will put, no, oh, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll, I'll just say no. I was going to make some sort of weird bet, but no. I, I, no. There's, there's no way that in three months that they're going to open it up to have mass people, five, yeah. 10,000 people in the convention center downtown Minneapolis. I just don't see it happening. Well, maybe the fall, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why we're doing it early too. We're kind of planning on the shows happening next fall. By then, if we're not back to normal, I think ice fishing gear is the least of our worries. I think we have something more serious to, to, to worry about. So that's why we're doing it. We just going to schedule it earlier. We're going to work with these shows as much as they want to work with us. Cause we want to be like a preview show. I mean, yeah. you know, let people order stuff if they want, but just have all these companies showing their new products. You know, maybe some of the companies will actually hold off their announcements of products, you know, until they get on the show or whatever. So that I'm going to kind of hint at them. I'm like, yeah, you know, if you got some things coming down the pipes, maybe wait for the show and, you know, you'll get a little more buzz or something. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So well, sounds good. Uh, you know, right now I'm just kind of itching to go fishing. It's, uh, I'm seeing the pictures and I got some buddies that are starting to get out. And uh, I know my son and I want to hopefully get out this, this weekend, try to get something figured out. It's not sure where we're going to go yet. Uh, I have plans. I'm going fishing. Although apparently I have to be some at a certain gas station at five in the morning. Um, so no, yeah. So, <laughs> so you don't know where you're going either. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not telling, I'm not telling. Actually we're hitting two different lakes. I've, I've been told now, so okay. let's see what happens. But yeah, my first, my first time out this year, uh, I should have all my stuff in, uh, that I've got on order and whatnot i've got everything basically all set up good to go i do have to rig some rods so i'll probably spend tomorrow on thursday rigging up rods but just a couple pan fish rods is probably all i'll need really um which what tie on a little jig no big deal so well you bring two and then you got what 10 more in the car just in case oh yeah 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 <laughs> i got i got one of those ice fishing innovation cases oh uh, yeah those are sweet and I love it. And well, I want to find a smaller case just for like three rods, three, four rods, just, but my ice fishing innovations case right now has 12 rods in it. I haven't put all the reels on there, so they don't all fit with the reels. Um, but yeah, so it, I typically carry about eight, eight combos with between the walleye and the panfish and everything in between. Um, so yeah, it'll be, yeah, it's always mass chaos in my rod box. Anyway, it's all nice and pretty like right at the beginning of the season because everything's organized everything and then after the first time out disaster yeah <laughs> I, feel, uh, it just, I don't know what happens by the end of the season you got jigs in your box and you got line here and weights there and just you know dead minnows in your fish house i mean it's it's crazy oh yeah dude and i i'm still picking out like i took the whole like uh styrofoam foam insert out i had plastics and jigs everywhere just stuck all over the place i'm like good lord maybe do that at the end of the season so i'm not scrambling and you know doing it beforehand but i don't know yeah we just get lazy it's like yeah well i'll take care of it later i'll take care of it later and then later comes and you still haven't taken care of it well i think like i don't know for me at the end of the night i'm just ready to go Mm -hmm. you know, packing up, it's just like gearing packed. Let's go. It's going to be a cold walk or a ride in or whatever it might be. And let's just, this is boogie. And you just, yeah, you kind of get kind of lazy and don't maybe put the rod socks on or your rods or you just, just pile it all in there and let it buck. Yeah. And my problem is I put so much stuff in my box that it's such a tet like it's Tetris. So everything perfectly fits in there. Cause I'm sitting in my, you know, in my TV room and I've got the time to, okay, if this handle is turned this way, I can fit this one next to that one and this and that. But then when you get done fishing by the end of the day, it's like, I just want to go home. I don't want to deal with this. So it can just go there. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yep, one hundred percent. Oh, I couldn't imagine having a wheelhouse. I would have stuff literally everywhere. Like you open up the microwave, and there'd probably be a box of jigs or something in there. Oh, we find stuff. I guarantee you, there is probably a crusty minnow somewhere in the shack right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah, that that's for sure. Oh, that reminds me, I gotta. Ooh, well, I was say my boat. I don't know if I left the drain plug out of my live well. There's no water in there, but. I'd like to leave it out so at least some airflow gets through there and stuff. So that might be a stinky mess in the spring, but whatever. Oh, well. It happens. Yeah. Um, let's see. We got some folks check uh, comment here. Let's see what they got to say. Uh, I was building a flip over while listening. <laughs> he was building a flip over shack while he was listening to the show. And, I was, you know, here's the, th the funny thing about the show is we, and one of the things that we were kind of wondering about is like, what are, how many people would watch it like all over the place and what they would be doing. We reached Alaska, California, Washington, Oregon, and then like everything that touches Canada to all the way to Maine and down. And then there were people hunting. There were people fishing. We had a guy uh, send me a picture of his laptop on top of his sled and it was streaming it. So <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. And then the same guy, I think, I don't think it was the same guy. He caught a 29 inch walleye in between a couple of the segments. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, that's awesome. But yeah, I mean, there was, I had a buddy that he sent me a picture in the tree stand of him. And he's like, I'm watching. And I saw him commenting and stuff. So, so yeah, I think it's one of those, you know, kind of the future things where you can reach people, just not, you know, people that go to this, to the show, you're looking at 20,000 people. Well, we're, like I said, 160,000 people saw it. Um, plus way more reach, uh, you know, reached way more people, but. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, let's see. Thank you for the awesome, awesome customer service for my order on the podcast ice fishing show. That's Sarah Spearing. I think she's talking to you. To me? Yeah. Awesome. She must have ordered a box. So yeah. you have great customer service. Uh, a little bit of an issue with uh, the post office, but and it just seems to kind of depend on where you are in the country. Um, you know, I'm not calling anybody up, but it seems anybody in in the Michigan area, it's just struggling getting their boxes. I, you see it like we had a package. I was following it. And it went to like South Dakota, and then it went to Iowa, and then it finally made it way to Michigan. I, I, I don't know what's going on. They're just probably overwhelmed. They're just getting bombarded. Dude, so Patrick, he had something on order. We won't mention the company because I got mine in like two days. But he lives in Bemidji, and it can't, I can't remember where it came from somewhere in minnesota but it was in bemidji and then it was back into saint paul <laughs> so it went from you know the company to saint paul to bemidji three and a half four hours away and then back to saint paul and now it's there <laughs> what in the hell so he's like i just canceled the order i'll, I'll just order it again <laughs> I guess. I don't know. So I, I just think that they're kind of overwhelmed. They're short-staffed and they're just rushing and stuff's mm -hmm. going on. You know, like we've even seen where they're not even scanning the label. And I know it's not just us. It's it's other guys that have been ordering stuff. Like They're not even scanning it. They're just throwing it on the truck. It's just like, get it out of here. Wow. And, yeah, I think a lot of that's kind of what's going on. You know, and other people, we've, we've had it where they're getting it the next day. It just it all depends on your post office. It's It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Um, you would think that after doing this for, I don't know, I mean, I guess at least fifty years, we'll say, right? Fifty years of really high traffic Christmas time shopping and the trends of people buying stuff online more and more and more and more, that they would probably hire more people during the Christmas time. I, especially this year, they had to see it coming that everybody was going to be home just typing away, ordering shit. Oh, it's going to be big, probably one of the biggest years ever. It's got to be. Yeah. I just saw a company today. I think they they said that today or tomorrow, uh, today's the 15th, that like today's today or tomorrow is like your last day to get it by Christmas. And then they, they even said, we're still not going to guarantee it unless you want to pay like extra, extra money for it. So, or yeah. Yeah. So if you're planning on ordering anything for christmas do it after this show don't turn away just go order stuff but or go get your laptop and order it now so 
Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, expecting we've been saying uh, try to get everything by the 19th, according to what we're seeing. So if you get it by the 19th, you should be able to get it here before Christmas. The 19th, okay. Yeah, cool. as as we are kind of cut off because we, we run a two day, and uh, for the most part, as long as it doesn't go to Iowa or wherever it goes, where um, you should be able to get it. Right, right. Uh, let's see. Michigan. Todd Allen says Michigan here. Yeah. Our state is a screwed up state. Still waiting on stuff ordered. It is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on out there. But <laughs> yeah, Jason's still waiting on all his stuff uh, to get there from the show. Wow. Uh, I ordered some fishing line and got it a week late on Sunday. I was shocked when my mailman pulled up on a Sunday. Well, they start delivering seven days a week right about now, I think. So don't don't be don't be shocked on that. Uh, <laughs> Rusty, I ordered some Billy Rub. It got sent to an old address when he got it. When he got it back, the package had forklift tire tracks on it, but the rubs were okay. <laughs> oh, oh, well, we'll just throw it on the truck and he gets what he gets. Oh, my God. It's a Billy Rub for uh, having some sweet packaging, I guess, huh? Apparently so, yeah. Whatever Billy Rub's using, everybody go buy that packaging because it'll show up just fine, I guess. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh yeah. Hey, oh yeah. Just in case anybody's wondering, um, all the segments right now, they're still on the Facebook page in the long four hour blocks on the YouTube page, SmackDown outdoors. You can find the four hour blocks. And then also there's a playlist for all the companies, including season stackle, uh, cut up. So you can just click on that company and watch it too. Uh, so just search SmackDown outdoors on the YouTube page and you can find it there. So, uh, all right, Justin. So for those of for the people that didn't watch the show or have no clue, or they just want to hear it again. T- tell us about season's tackle, man. Cause everybody that I've talked to that has ordered it and received a box so far, they all tell me I need to do it. They all say it's worth it. You get what you're paying for plus more. Um, let's go ahead and tell them about it, man. Uh, that's, that's great to hear. So what it is, it's, uh, it's a mystery box. Uh, like all of our competitors out there, mystery tackle box, Lucky Tackle Box, Monster Bass, um, except our niche is we're using um, guys and gals that are painting baits, that are making jigs, and kind of doing stuff in their small shops. We're not using any of the really big vendors, um, which is kind of neat. So it's kind of a bunch of small businesses that are kind of put into this box. Yeah, like you guys got back 50 vendors this weekend. 50 vendors wow and you got like curtis curtis funk from funk's jigs we did some some giveaways uh for his jigs he's one of your vendors right absolutely yep and yep. uh widowmaker um high tech customs you know a lot of guys you know one of the neat things is i've asked you know in our painting of baits i've asked some of these guys that maybe are not here in minnesota maybe they're down south or out west or out east and i've asked them just to kind of do their thing and when they're when they're painting these baits and i did that for a reason because i wanted to see different stuff you know you kind of go into the store and over the years you kind of see the same patterns and i thought if, if i would let them kind of do their thing that we could get something unique and something different and, and that's what's happening these baits that we're getting back I and mean, they're they're walleye catching machines but they're just stuff you've never seen before and you know it's kind of bringing some stuff that maybe if you were to go into a, a bait shop in that particular part of the country, you might see that all the time. But here, you'd never see it. Right. And so we're bringing them to the forefront, which is pretty cool. Yeah. No, I, you kind of showed some different stuff on the live show and uh, or on the on the virtual show. We're live now, but I'm sitting here and I'm going, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really cool stuff and, and and it's one of those things where like you said there's so many guys out there and everybody's you know especially like walleyes right i mean everybody goes crazy for different colors you go to the and it's starting to creep in over here too in minnesota where you go to cabela's and they've got i think warrior custom baits they've got a whole section of that and then i think viper or something fleet farm i think is like viper custom tackles and it's just ripping wraps shad wraps bombers you know all the typical stuff right next to it but just crazy color patterns. And as a walleye tournament guy myself, um, yeah, I mean, we, it does somewhat work from time to time, but that's a nice $14 bait. That's a nice $14 bait. Next thing you know, you got $200 worth of bait (laughs) because it looks cool. 
looks cool. And you know, well, they, they say they make the lures for us, not for the fish. And I kind of agree with that a little bit. Cause Dude, 100 percent, hundred. Walk down that aisle and you see some of this like, oh, that'll catch fish, and that'll catch fish, you know. And I'm like a little kid sometimes, and I'm when I'm opening these boxes and these baits, I'm just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, oh yeah, it's so much fun. Yeah, uh, it's like Christmas every time I get a box. It's it's an adult can well it's not an adult candy shop because that'd be weird, but uh, I I call, it, <laughs> uh, I call it the fisherman's candy shop. You know the fisherman's candy aisle because that's all it is is candy paint on on plastic baits, some you know wood baits too. But that's all it is. It's just a it's just a candy shop for fishermen, and, and it works. It it pulls you in, and as you know, as fishing tournaments, the kind of the, where my exposure was was when I was fishing the NWT was. I had a bunch of custom baits done, and over the years I've been talking to these guys, and that's kind of where the idea came from. Well, well, how do I take what they're doing and be able to let other people see what what they're doing? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when the, the idea came. So, all right, well, I'm going to send you blanks, or you're going to send me baits, and I'm going to let you kind of paint them. And what we're getting is tournament quality stuff that, uh, unless you're going to some of those bait shops out in the on the East Coast, like Ohio and in Michigan and stuff, and even Green Bay, you'd never see any of that stuff. And that's what's really cool. We're, we're bringing that into our boxes and, and also taking that same idea and then doing the ripping wraps or doing the puppet minnows or doing the jigging wraps. And, and it's really cool stuff that's coming out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, being if you've ever, you know, walked down the custom aisles in these places, I mean, it, it's ex it's you look at it and you're like there's no like why why did we do that color pattern but somebody caught a fish on it one time and, and, it's, and it's the best custom paint you know the guy had a really great trip with it and that's because the fish were hungry but he blames it on the bait and now he brings that color over to us and yeah it's great for custom guys like if i was smart of course there's a lot of things i would have done differently but i just started painting baits like 10, 10 years ago Cause I mean, now it, I mean, there's guys, I, I know guys that literally, I mean, Curtis Funk is one of them. He's just doing ice fishing gear, you know, ice fishing stuff for the most part, but they're just packed. I mean, they're just busy as hell all the time. And you, and, you know, we put a link to all of our vendors. So if you find something that you like in the box, let's say it's a certain lure that you like and you wanted to buy it, you'd be able to go right to that vendor and just click on their logo and it brings you right to their website or the Facebook page. But what we're finding is a lot of these guys, they're only going to do so many. Like Curtis only paints, and then he's done. Once mm -hmm. he's done, he's out. He's out till next year. So whatever we got, we're the only ones that are going to have it. And that goes for a lot of these painters. They're like, I'm going to do this batch of 100 or 200 baits, and just that's all you're going to get from me till springtime. And I'm already, I've already started sending out blanks for spring. I'm have, to, I'm learning. I'm have to be three months ahead of the game uh, for us to to be able to get this stuff back. Because just you know, they're hand painting them. It takes time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, if you're dealing with a custom anything, be patient. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a while, especially if you throw some stupid curveball into the mix. Yeah, I want it, but I want it with blue stripes instead of purple. Then he's got to do it special for you. So calm down. Jesus it, Christ. It's common. Yeah, that's what I hear a lot, but yeah, it's, it's common. And we've got stuff we've ordered back in August and it's not have gotten it yet, which is good and bad because we'll have, you know, more new stuff that's coming in, but you know, you just, it takes time. You know, these guys are putting the eyes on clear coat and coming up the paint job, drying them. And, you know, and sometimes there's issues with the blanks themselves and they maybe have to fix it or they have to toss it. It's just, there's so many factors. With it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Curtis Funk, I still have 75 jigs left. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, call you after this, Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> expect a phone call in a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the box is a great way to promote the smaller company. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, I mean, that's kind of the whole thing is that he's getting these companies that nobody's ever heard of into different states and, and hands of people that might not have known them, you know, anyways. Um, but one of the big things too, is that especially with walleye crankbaits and ice fishing jigs, where do you start with colors? Well, this is one of these things where you buy a box and you get whatever you get and you go out and try them. And realistically, you're probably going to catch fish on 90% of this stuff all the time. I mean, it's like we've been saying, it's, it's eye catching for us. Fish don't care. They're hungry or they're not, or you just get them pissed off enough where they, they bite it anyway. So 
just got a bang on their head. They wake up. Well, sometimes you, you get, that's what you got to do, especially when you're jigging. Just hit them hard enough, and they'll they'll wake up and bite it. Absolutely. Um, so we're just yeah, we kind of stand behind that. We believe everything that we're putting in the box. You know, there'll be a situation where you're going to be able to catch fish with it. And right. We, we gotta, you know, vary in size, vary in colors, vary in manufacturers that are making it. So there's always going to be stuff in that box where you could literally take that box and go fishing that day. Yeah. And have a great day. Right. Right. Where'd you come up with the idea for the company? Where did where'd this whole thing come up come from? Uh, it started when I was fishing the tournaments, just seeing how cool it was to see this custom stuff because I had never seen it before. And then, and then we went, uh, you know, we had a blowout on Lake Erie one day and we went, you know, bait fish shopping and we went to all these different shops and saw all these custom stuff. And I was just like, whoa. And then I saw their 13, 14, 15 bucks a pop. I was like, whoa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's kind of what sparked it. And, um, you know, me being a shop for 25 years and in and out of fishing and in and out of shopping with the whole COVID thing, uh, my wife and I lost her job back in March. And we mm-hmm. said, well, what are we going to do? And then we just kept pushing this idea and pushing this idea. And then this fall, we just grabbed each other's hand and said, let's pull the trigger and make this happen. And uh, and roll the dice. And here we are. So you guys were chefs and then you lost your job because of COVID. Yep. Yeah. Our hotel, the the highest paid guy in the hotel, one of those guys whacked. Oh. Uh, Yes. It it sucked. And that was back at the Mm -hmm. end of March, something like that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was tough. We didn't know what was going to happen and what we were going to do. And so my son and I and the family, we just, we went fishing every day. <laughs> what else are you going to do? And, and now at the point where there are so many restaurants that are closing and are, are going to close, I, you know, I feel for everybody in the industry. I, I just, that industry is just going to be suffering for a long time. And so we said, we're just going to, we're going to walk away. And, you know, and I had one gal tell me the only time I'm ever smiling was when I'm talking about fishing. And I just wanted to find a way uh, that I could get into the industry and, you know, try to make a living, which is, you know, almost as tough as the restaurant industry, trying to make a living with it. And I love to get back fishing tournaments again. I, I just, I love the competition. It's so much fun. Uh, you know, your heart starts pounding when you're taking off. And, you know, if you're, I've had a few good days where you're just shaking and you're trying to get the fish in the boat. And I just, I love the adrenaline factor of it. And uh, I'm hoping that this is a catalyst for us to kind of, get back into that piece and kind of raise three more fishermen and fisher gals in, in the family and get them all excited. I'm seeing my daughter watch fishing videos in the morning. I mean, it's nice. It's working. They're, they're, they're digging it. And they're <laughs> kind of at that age where they're really starting to kind of take off on their own. Nice. Nice. Um, did you fish at any tournaments this year or was it just kind of just work on this? And I know they, no. met, you know, the whole, the schedule was all thrown all over the place, but. Yeah, it just wasn't in the books. You know how expensive it is to fish those tournaments. You know, there's no <laughs> I, way it was happening. I know how I know how expensive it is to fish the AIM Weekend Walleye Series and the NWT is only what mm, about five times more expensive or whatever. Yeah, it's <laughs> for the week you're looking at about seven grand for a tournament. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not cheap, and you never know what's going to happen. You, you could do really well, or you could you know struggle like a lot of other people all. You just never know. I mean, you're out there fishing the toughest time of the day and crappy weather, and I mean, you're you're, you're going to send it. You're going to go, and uh, so I'm hoping to get back. I haven't fished a tournament in two years, and uh, it's it's too long for me. I got that itch really bad. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if everything goes right, I plan on fishing the NWT, um, hopefully some AIM, and um, well, that's probably be enough right there. With what we got going on, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see how much time you have to fish. <laughs> Well, that's just it. Like I wanted to go fishing this week, and even last week, and we just were too busy to even go. So we're, you know, trying to get the wife dialed in so we can uh, we can sneak out. <laughs> uh, are you hiring yet? <laughs> uh, we're close. We're close. I would say by spring we'll probably start uh, maybe hiring a first employee. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But right now we can still kind of handle what we're doing. I can keep that that personal touch, and we've also figured out a number of how many subscriptions or how many monthly sales that we're going to do before we have to take that next step. Um, and we're, we're hoping we're going to actually put a cap on it at, at some point and say, this is what we're going to do. And if we want to grow past that, that's a whole different deal. But it comes down to, you know, even if we had a hundred vendors, we're only going to be able to have a max of so many boxes per month because of what they can produce. Right. Right. Well, I see kind of down the road, it's going to become an exclusive thing. 
Um, so I would suggest you get in now because eventually you won't be able to get it. You'll have to either have subscription or only so many boxes per month. So now you're threatening me with the fact that I might not be able to get it. God damn it. <laughs> you know, we got that uh, that special holiday mystery mystery box going on right now, Doug. Mystery mystery box? Yeah, so it's a blend of walleye and panfish, and it's 100 bucks. And, I mean, the thing is just stock full of stuff, and it's got you know, plastics and jigs and rip and wraps and uh, rattle baits and God damn it. all kinds of little, little fun goodies. We're running that. Um Till the 19th. I've got about 27, 28 of those left. Okay. We had 150. So we, Jesus it's, Christ. Yeah, it's uh it's going well. All right. And now just so anybody that's wondering, no bass. It's he's not doing bass boxes because there's like three or four other companies that do it. One or maybe two that does it okay. Um, but he's not touching bass. You're gonna you're doing the pan fish now, you're doing walleye. Yep. And then you're going to be like, what are the other, you got like nine total boxes you're going to be doing at some point? Yeah. So we got the walleye, we got the panfish, and then we got the crankbait box that we're always going to do. That's our bread and butter. And then in the spring, we're going to add catfish, fly box, um, salmon, trout, musky, pike, and maybe a small moth. We're talking about that. Oh, <laughs> see now, see, see, well, and, and, but here's the thing. I mean, most of your bass boxes is all largemouth shit. Absolutely. <clears throat> it's it there's it's all more largemouth stuff and smallmouth are getting more and more and more popular especially if you're dealing with, you know, Minnesota, Malax, Vermilion stuff like that. So I don't know who you're talking to about it and this and that, but if you got some, you know, if you need some help, I'd say just call up some of those guides or whatever from the Malax and Vermilion area. Well, that's, that's exactly what we're going to do. I've got a few buddies that, that guy up there that I've been talking to, and they're going to they're gonna have a little hand in building that box if, if we end up pulling the trigger on it. So yeah, all said and done, we'll have nine different species or different styles of boxes, um, three levels of everything available one time or available monthly. Um, you know, the way we kind of set it up is, is really when you come into a season, because we change with the season, so we have our, our winter box, our spring, our summer, our fall, is if you come in and you want to stock up and you want to load up, we got that platinum box for 200 bucks. There's enough baits in there that you won't even have to go do your little run at Cabela's and spend all that extra money that you might and get that sense of value and have plenty of stuff in there. And if you're a guy that likes to change it up and have different stuff show up each month, you can do the, the monthly and you can pause at any time. You can restart at any time. Uh, we offer, um, it's kind of cool, we call it the Tackle Box Ballet. Um, so we manage your box. We take a picture of everything that goes in your box every single month. If you like a certain bait or a certain color, or you want to let us know what lakes that you're fishing, we kind of help manage that for you. So you're kind of getting exactly what you're looking for. Nice. So we don't, we don't pre-box anything. As the order comes in, we build the box. We don't pre-make the boxes. So I'm not going to get the same stupid hook from some company I've never heard of every single box, like in a, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of that box that I used to got. Now they're defunct. Um, anyway, there was a bass box and it's like, you get the same two hooks, almost the same baits. It's just a different wrapper. It's made by the same company that you can't even find a website for. Yeah. They don't even really exist. And no, we're so proud of our guys that we've got a link to their website or their social media on our page. So yeah. you feel like you get it right from them. Yeah, no, that's cool. Uh, Dave law says you putting some recipes in the box too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I went down the road. I think we'll probably bring some uh, some culinary stuff to some of the, the live episodes and things that we're doing. Absolutely, I'm I'm never not going to be a chef. I just I was going to say the hours in the kitchen anymore. I was going to say, yeah, you're a chef. I'm sure you got some recipe cards you could just xerox and throw them in the old book. I have a book with 101 ways how to cook walleye. I've been working on that for my whole life, and 99 of them are all different flavors of shore lunch. <laughs> well, okay. You can do a different beer every single time. You probably okay. can do that. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I've said this many times on the show. Walleye doesn't taste like anything, and that's why Minnesotans like it because it tastes what you put on top of it. Absolutely. That's it. Other than, that's the only reason people like walleye. It doesn't taste like anything. Perch I tastes think it has a little walleye. bit of a sweet flavor to it. Well, yeah. It, well, it's, yeah, sweet, but no flavor. And just like deer. 
people like beef over deer because beef tastes like chicken because all everything he eats is corn and it's just sweet. But you give them a deer steak and they're like, oh, what's this? It's called flavor. (laughs) Yeah, it's called flavor. It's not gamey. That's what food (laughs) is supposed to taste like. Like, Exactly. It's supposed to have what it's been eating in it, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, you look at all the good chefs that, you know, like Gordon Ramsay and shit. He just doesn't take a steak, put it on the grill, flip it over and give it to you. No, he's got to put something on it to make it taste like something. Absolutely. Or the sauce that goes with it or the accompaniments. And Right. He manipulates his, his proteins quite well. And he's got that down. He's a, he's a hell of a chef. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Joey says, I need a trout box for ice season. You going to do an ice fishing uh, trout box? Absolutely. So we're going to have an exclusive trout box. We're only going to do so many when the trout season opens up, which is like, what, January 15th or something? I'm not sure when the season opens up. I don't Maybe know. Can answer that one. But we, uh, we've worked with three different guys. We're going to we're gonna have a special ice fishing trout box. I'm going to run a limited edition of them. I'm going to take it out myself. I've got some friends I met um, at Grouse Camp this uh, this fall that live up uh, near Duluth. And we're, uh, we're going to go lake trout fishing on the big, uh, big, big, big pond. Nice. And that's kind of the inspiration to do the box. So we will have, uh, we will have some of those. Okay. So make sure when you do these boxes, just include a little packet of little marshmallows, the little mini ones. <laughs> really? Dude, trout love those things, like little rainbows and shit like that. The little trout, you know? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm sure big trout might like them too. But yeah, like if you go down to Courthouse Lake in Chaska or, um, oh, there's one up in Coon Rapids and, you know, the different man-made, you know, where they stock them. If it's just yep. for the season. Uh, yeah, if you bring them little mini marshmallows, the little tiny ones you put on top of your hot chocolate, uh, that apparently works. So I don't know. I mean, just put in a little thing of marshmallows and guys can either eat them or they can use them as bait. One of the two. Uh, I'm going to do that. And if anybody says anything, I'm going to say Doug recommended it. <laughs> hey, hey. Of fact, I'll put it in a package. It's Doug's marshmallows. <laughs> it's the SmackDown pack. <laughs> it's the smack pack. Smack pack. I'm going to do that. Yeah. We'll, we'll come up with it. Yeah. It's the SmackDown trout pack. There you go. Just put it on a hook, and there you go. You can catch a bunch of fish. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, Chris Wojek, uh, holy shit, just opened my box. Thanks, Justin. So apparently he's happy. Ah, uh, Chris, you finally got it. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Frank's Red Hot and Cajun Shore Lunch. That's my go-to for walleye. That actually sounds decent. It does. See, because that's the thing. You got to get a little flavor in there so it actually tastes like something good uh colorado trout love pink hint hint and our colorado lake trout love white tubes and glow tubes yep definitely so you're going to do like a big trout or like small trout stuff uh, we're thinking lake trout lakers big guys okay. Okay. so big we've got some really large custom plastics and these huge uh these huge hooks and dresses and skirts and stuff um we're really kind of kind of pushing for that you know or the snappy pole type of fish. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so so your lake trout box is going to be full of nothing but tubes and spoons. Tubes, spoons, and marshmallows. <laughs> yeah, tubes, spoons, and marshmallows. Well, you know, that's the funny thing. It's like, hey, can you do a trout box? Yeah, okay, what are we going to put in it? What does everybody use? Well, tubes and spoons. And, well, that's kind of it. But how many color tubes, how many sizes of tubes, how many color spoons, how many sizes of shapes? So I could see it, be, it being a cool thing, especially doing kind of a limited uh, limited run of it too. Yeah, and then the, the following year we'll have it we'll have it the full the full deal. But we just kind of want to do a trial and error and, and kind of check out a couple of these vendors that are producing. I've already had to pay for them and order them, so they're they're on their way. And we nice. early in, in December to, to pull the trigger on it so I can get it in time. Nice, nice. Um, so like you decided to do this. How did you go about figuring out how everything's going to work? How people are going to, yeah, how people are going to order, how you're going to fulfill. I mean, this is not, I'm ordering, you know, ha- Hey, go check out my merch store. Cause I went online and put a logo on a bunch of shirts, ordered hats and selling them. I mean, this is a lot of uh, a, a ton of, um, uh, oh, hell what the words for it. Uh, logistics, logistics. logistics. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's been, uh, a little bit of learn by fire and then uh, a little bit of luck and, and then a little bit of 
kind of using some of the things I learned as a chef and kind of applying those. Uh, you know, one of these terms is called mise en place, which is having everything in your place. And that's kind of the same thing of having all the vendors kind of in their spot and having the stuff lined up a certain way where we have all of our wildlife stuff in one area. We have all of our uh, pantry stuff in another and how we rotate new stuff that comes in, how we take the bags, how we label it, how we cost it, how we price it. Um, it's been a, a little bit of a challenge, but it's we've kind of got our system down now. And so now it's really kind of just kind of flowing. And the orders come in. We can easily just grab the card. We can pick and pull. Uh, we can make sure that's, you know, if it's a returning customer, that they're making sure they're not getting the same stuff. And the other neat thing to make sure that doesn't happen is we've gone through so much inventory, we're already on our second and third round of stuff coming in. No, oh, so you don't even have to worry about giving them the same stuff. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. Perfect. <laughs> and we've, we've begun to actually start to order a, a second and even third time from some of these vendors. And what we say to them, I go, what did we do last time? All right, we'll talk about it. And then they'll give us something new. And the other neat thing is, I didn't expect this to happen, but there's been some collaboration on coming up with different stuff. Like, hey, what about this? What about that? And so we're kind of spitting ideas of of different lure styles and colors and things to do. And what we end up getting is, you know, this next round of stuff is just things that we've kind of collaborated on and created together. And I think that's something I didn't expect to happen, mm -hmm. uh, but it's happening, and that's just going to kind of keep evolving. Well, it, that's one of those things where you get feedback, right? Like, like you said, Hey, I, I, you know, I like this. I don't like that. Your valet kind of service you got, right? Yeah. Hey, I want some, you know, fish really love orange here or they really love blue here. And if you start getting more, you know, if you're getting that from everybody, you kind of take that sample size or that all that information and kind of look at what's the majority of guys want. They want bigger crankbaits and they like the blue, the pink, and the yellow. Well, let's get some more of those. So, hey, custom guys, do a little more blue, pink, and yellow in the big crankbaits. Exactly. And, yeah. And makes, that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. It makes and perfect. We're, we're trying to have also where we're, you know, I got stuff that's styled for the Great Lakes, I got stuff that's styled for the Midwest. And we've kind of have that a little bit separated too in our deal. So when you, you order a crankbait box, I want you, there's a little spot there to put notes and you can say, Hey, you know, I'm fishing Lake Erie or I'm fishing Green Bay or I'm fishing Mille Lacs. And we can kind of tailor off, you know, my experience as a tournament angler and people that I know that fish and the other guides that I know and kind of take all that information and collaborate it and just come up with how it spits out of, you know, these different colors and sizes of baits and styles that will kind of match with that. Yeah. So I'm going to Lake of the Woods and I'm like, hey, throw some, you know, get some reef runner style baits and pink, white, and yellow and blue and silver. You hook, got it. Hook a brother up with, with heavy on that side. Exactly. And we've got different styles of, of baits when it comes to the crankbaits. And we've got, uh, you know, in the, when the spring season starts and we move into the summer and fall, there's always going to be crankbaits in the walleye box. Yeah. But they're varying size. Like in the early of the year, they're going to be smaller profile baits they're going to be you know number sevens uh number fives they're going to have you know because the guys are fishing the rivers they're fishing shallow and so our, our boxes are kind of you know follow that fishing trend and mm -hmm. as you kind of go into the season we get into the live bait stuff we get into the bigger crank baits and uh, the bigger profile stuff and i mean that's just kind of how we're doing it i'm doing it as if i were to be fishing it myself and that's how we're filling the box per and, and you know here's here's the thing it's like i love introducing people to the great outdoors right and teaching them how to fish and teaching them how to hunt and this right here is one of these things that very similar to omnia tackle and how they do the shot by lake and and different stuff like that to where if you're going to Mille Lacs, you can go okay well i can take that giant wall and shrink it down to this handful of baits well you can do this kind of the same thing with you except you, i'm not getting to pick exactly what i want it's a surprise which is cool because I mean, you open a box and it's like, oh, look at all this shiny candy paint once again, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, you know, I, I don't care what it is. If somebody gives me a crankbait, I'm always like, oh, sweet. I'll add that to my stash of 2000 of them hanging out in the garage by themselves. <laughs> I mean, Isn't here's crazy. We have all these baits yet. We still want more. I have more baits I could ever count and I still want more. Dude, you know, well, of course you don't, but. I have the, it's got to be one of the largest collection of Selmo Hornet number fours. I love that bait. The little tiny bastard because they went on sale at Fleet Farm or in the clearance bin and I bought up 
literally every one they had at three fleet farms. Wow. How many of those things do I need? Like four in like a dark, a light, and some couple different colors. But it's crankbait, man. And oh my God, they're on sale. <sighs> I'll take them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we also lose them too, right? You get fish will right. bite them off or they'll get snapped if you're bouncing off the bottom or if you're running the river. I mean, this this year we fished a river a lot. We fished the St. Croix a ton and I lost a ton of crankbaits. <sighs> Dude, I'm having flashbacks I'm, right now. Yeah. I went. I mean, we had, my son and I tried to figure out. We think we lost about 50. Oh, God. Well, okay, I won't complain too much about losing my one brand new crankbait five seconds after setting it down in the, you know, back in the water on, on in Red Wing there, so I won't complain too much. Yeah, okay. it's it was, it was nuts <laughs> on the river that there were so many people. We were going through to Kinney, and there'd be a boat on your right and a boat on your left, and they'd just be kind of squishing you out. It was just it was awful. Well, there was, was no... You know, there was only what an increase of thirty percent of fishing licenses this year, something like that. Lots of recreational stuff that was out there too. Right. I mean, it, it, it didn't matter if it was Monday morning, Thursday afternoon, or Saturday. The lakes were always busy because there were so many people off from work. And, yep. and did you did you see the meme on that's been floating around saying that the DNR doesn't want to allow us two lines in the summer because it'll increase fishing pressure by thirty percent? But then the bottom is this picture of, oh, fishing licenses have increased by 30%. DNR is like, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, we've, you know, yeah. All right, cool. Don't you think we'll ever see that two lines in the summer? I mean, everybody else does it. I just don't understand why we can't do it. Uh, I don't think we'll see it under our current administration. It's going to take somebody who is very 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 outdoors uh orientated that is just full of common sense like basically not a politician otherwise i don't think it'll happen unless there's a petition that is brought up and it's got so many signatures on it that they yeah, cannot well, deny it yeah but it's just it just makes no sense like it does. Nobody has been able to come up with a good reason why you can't use two fishing lines in open water in Minnesota. There's none. You go everywhere else that has multiple lines. They've got great fisheries. They've got plenty of fish. So it, I can actually dial in what I want quicker. I mean, you know this, NWT. Imagine fishing the NWT out on Lake Erie with one rod and reel per guy. So you got two guys in your boats, two rods and reels, fishing Lake Erie, Two baits out. Good no. effing luck. Yeah, it, it's not going to happen. You're, yeah. You're gonna yeah. I mean, so we get two lines per person. Me and you go fishing out on Lake Malax. We get two lines per person. We got four lines out. We can find out what they're biting on quicker. We can catch fish quicker. We can have fun and continue to do it. If we're going to keep a limit, we're going to keep a limit either way. It's just going to be able to fill it quicker, but still go out there and have fun catching fish. Uh, absolutely. And <laughs> Hopefully we'll see it. I, it doesn't make any sense to me either. I kind of got my head spun on that one. I mean, you yeah. got two in the winter. Why do you have just the one? But well, see, it's it's old. Tra I mean, I don't. It's old tradition stuff. How long did it take them to to just let us catch bass, catch and release during you know the beginning of the season? No. There was you know, like walleye opened up. Well, you can't catch bass yet. Well, why? Oh, they're spawning. Okay, so they spawn everywhere. They spawn in Texas and Florida all year round and they're just fine there so they finally I mean, made it keeping the bass anyways and aren't most bass getting tossed back well yeah that's the thing i mean yeah most get tossed back um i know there's a lot of casualty in the winter time on smaller bass because they're just big panfish i mean they're just big bluegills that's all they are <laughs> so they taste they taste basically the same as a bluegill they're just bigger but yeah. not it's not in the summertime. Summertime bass and big bass, let them go. That's eh, not very good. No. So, uh, Tim Sorensen wants to say wants to tell you have the silver panfish and just receive the silver walleye. Love them both. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate yep. that. Okay. So, do you have any of these? Because I was wondering. I sh and, and uh, Joey says I have a, a, an American flag crankbait by a company DK Lures out here in Colorado, and I have to have it. Had to have it, never seen it used. Didn't you get some in like that? I have 
Yep, from High Tech, we are working with Reef Runner, and I don't know if I should really get into this yet, but <laughs> we don't have something really cool uh, for veterans and for the whole Tommy Strong movement. Okay. Um, we're kind of working on that right now to, to get those done, and that's going to be uh, a donation piece thing that we're going to do. We're going to raise some money for veterans with it. Okay. Uh, that coming down the pipeline. Uh, if you saw that picture on on our uh, on our Facebook, I have one of them. I'm keeping that one for myself because <laughs> they're exclusive right now. But it um, all the guys that fished championship day on the NWT um, all got one from High Tech. Oh, and, cool. Uh, I can't. Is it John Hoyer, I think Hoyer is the one that went out there and fished with it and caught a fish on that lure. He was. <laughs> Daryl was like, "You're not supposed to fish with that lure." That was just a. It's a fishing lure. The wall, dude, you know? It's a fishing lure. You got to use it. Come on now. So that's coming down the pipeline. We're we're working with Reef Hunter exclusively to get some, some special uh, some special lures from them, and uh, High Tech's going to paint them. And we're going to work out something where every one of those in the box, there's going to be a donation piece and to all the money raised will go to help our veterans. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, if you need any help promoting that stuff, just, you know, we'll, we can talk and give you some shout outs and stuff like that too. So I'll help you out there. Yep. That's all, all, in the, all in the works. We, a lot of stuff that we want to do, but before we can run, we got to walk and I want to make sure the boxes that are going out right now, that we're doing a good job, that we're managing them right. Um, you know, I'm also having to coordinate with, you know, 50 other, I call them artists, just as much as a lure maker. Um, and if you ever heard that term, an artist, there's some challenges with, um, mm -hmm. with dealing with that piece and, um, and planning out and being a, ahead of the game and, um, you know, collaborating on what we're doing with the different lures. And, and so there's just, there's a lot to it. And, uh, it's more than just packing the box. There's, I'm constantly looking for, um, new stuff, other guys to work with, as well as managing and using the stuff that's that's already coming in. Um, so there's there's definitely some uh, there's a lot of work with it, um, a lot more than I anticipated on that and that part of it. But it's also really fun to get to talk about baits all the time and and colors and how it fishes and how it runs and and you know what it does under the ice and, and all those fun things. Right. See, and you. <laughs> Here, okay, everybody listen to me just for a second. If you've been, if you have paid attention to the show, you've watched the show, listened to the show for a while, right? So during this whole COVID thing, I have preached through this entire damn ordeal that you have had how long, especially if you've lost your job or you were just furloughed or whatever, to not necessarily completely start a whole new company and start selling products or whatever, but at least lay the groundwork to start a company. And this right here, you are a perfect example of what I was talking about. You lost your job because of COVID and you're like, Hey, we got this idea. Let's start work. Let's just do it. Let's start working on it and see where it takes us. And it seems pretty successful so far from what I can, I can tell. So this right here is the perfect example. And what I have been preaching for the past, I don't know how long have we been dealing with this 10 years now? Seems like, but yeah. I mean, I've told people time and time again, Hey, start something, start something, start something in your basement. I'm a basement dweller. That's where I'm, I'm coming to you over the internet from is my basement in my office. All these people that we had on the show, or not all of them, but a lot of these people that we had on the show, Bass Kang. Did you see that thing? That that ice uh, the shuttle? Yeah, I got it. I, Dude. I want one. I, Dude, I, gotta I, have one. I got one ordered. I got one ordered. He is he makes a shuttle for your for your ice uh, sonar and stuff. It's totally mo modular, all sorts of he won best in show. We gave him best in show, and he was pretty sure he I mean he came out, he basically designed the thing on a cell phone. So nobody can give me an excuse about, oh, it's too hard to do anything. Shut up. <laughs> I get a little, well, I, I get a little hyped. I get a little hyped from time to time. I think it takes, to take that next step to actually go for it, uh, you know, you got to have a little bit of that entrepreneur spirit in you. You know, right. this is the, the fourth business that I've owned. You know, I've, I've owned some restaurants. I own a catering company. I owned a, a company called Chef in a Box before Blue Apron was around back in 2009 mm -hmm. and um, I think I've always kind of been a, a little bit ahead of the curve with the ideas. And you got to have the idea, man. And then you got to have the money, right? And then you got to have the other person to drive it. So 
all yeah. three of those things gotta happen. So, but sometimes you gotta start somewhere, right? You gotta start with the idea and then push it. And if it drives you, if you like it, if you're having fun with it, go with it. Ride that roller coaster and let it see where it takes it. Boom. There we go. <laughs> I mean, here, here. I'm going to throw this out at everybody. Nobody's got an excuse not to start something. Here we go. So go to Spreadshirt. Come up with a design. Throw it on a T-shirt. I did that last night, two nights ago. When did I do that? With my Game Changer sweatshirt. I've already sold four of them. So there you go. It's <laughs> not. I'm serious. I had one sold in 10 minutes. I just put a post out there. Next thing I know, I'm like, ding. Oh, sweet. Somebody bought a sweatshirt. Cool. I mean, it's you just got to do it. I mean, that's what I tell people. It's just have to do it. It doesn't have to be big and bold like, I mean, your customer, you know, this and that and dealing with 50 companies. A t-shirt company, a, a YouTube channel, a podcast, a blog, start writing a book, something. We've especially... <laughs> what's that? Make some jigs. Yeah. Make some jigs. Something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do anything. Don't and and who knows where you you know it'll take you. Just say it, it just I'm, I just dumbfounds me. People are like oh, oh I don't know I'm not happy with where I'm at. Uh -huh. Or I want to be in the fishing industry. Well, what are you doing to get in the fishing industry? Uh, well I go to my job and then I go home and I watch TV and then I play PS Five because Call of Duty's on. My buddies want me to play Call of Duty. Uh, but I fish on the weekends. I'm like okay, well you're not going to get in the fishing industry by doing that. I've been trying to get in for 10 years. It's taken me 10 years to get into this. All right. Yeah. And I finally found what it was that I could open the door with. Dude, I'm t we are got, got knocking. Dude, we are so creepily similar. I am a failed YouTube guy. I'm a failed TV guy. And I all of a sudden decided to start talking into a microphone. And now people listen to me all the time. I don't understand it kind of the same thing. It's been a long journey and all of a sudden I found something that people say I'm good at. I don't know, whatever. I blame it on my guests that, you know, they're the reason why I'm there's any success to this show. But it's just keep trying. Tim, 10 years, me 2005ish, 6ish, 7ish. I've been off and on, off and on getting big, you know, getting into the industry and then this that and the other. And now I found something that I like doing and then I'm moderately successful at, and then I'm actually, it's starting to build and it just takes time to do. It just takes that. If you don't want it, you don't want it. You're never going to do it. So how bad do you want it? I guess. Exactly. How do you lay awake at night dreaming about it? I mean, I, I've heard this thing where, even even as a chef, before I became a chef, I dreamt about it for years. And then the right things at the right time happened. The school had just opened up, and this was 1999. You know, five years out of high school, I had already gone to college. And decided, hey, I'm going to take the next step, and I'm going to go to culinary school. I couldn't even grill a grilled cheese. I mean, it was awful. And before you know it, you're finishing school. You're I was working at the Ritz Carlton in San Francisco. It was you just gotta sometimes take that leap of faith and just just kind of go for it and roll the dice. And not everybody can do that, but you, I think you got to give it a shot. Well, just start small, start planning. <clears throat> and if, if you have an idea that's going to take <clears throat> the, the hundred thousand dollars to do it right, to start it. Okay. That's cool. Forget about how much money it's going to take. Come up with the game plan, just like fishing come up tournament fishing come up with the game plan to get you to the winner circle come down every little fine detail that you possibly can until you got that thing dialed in just like pre-fishing you've been out there pre-fishing and pre-fishing and pre-fishing you're planning you're planning you're planning you're planning until you've got nothing else that you can possibly add to it and it's just perfect and it happened to a, i mean it, we got we had a tournament on Lake of the Woods, and that's exactly what the winning team did. They had it completely planned out down to the feeding windows and the colors to use in each feeding window. It was insane. Wow. Yeah. And then once you have that plan, start shopping around. Start talking to people with money. Hey, here's my idea. Can you help me out? Start yeah, selling. Come up, come up with a business plan. That's yeah. 
You do that all on a spreadsheet. Right, right. And you know, it's funny you're talking about like sleeping, you know, do you do you dream about it and this and that? I have by my bed on my nightstand a pen and a pad of paper. Cause every once in a while I'll be laying there right before it always like right as I'm just starting to fall, like two seconds later and you're out. I'll get some stupid idea and I will make myself get up. My wife hates it because I have to turn a light on, grab the pen and paper, write it down, put it back down, and then go to sleep. Otherwise, I'll forget about it. Well, I've had kind of the opposite where the idea pops in my head and then I can't sleep. I'm up all night thinking about it and dreaming about it. And then it just, it kind of eats you and it kind of eats you and kind of eats you. And you got to find a way to get it out. That's a great way to get it out is, yep. is to write it down. I, I sometimes do the opposite this one as well on the idea to like it. Well, if I didn't have a job to go to in the morning, I probably just stay up at night, but I have to get up at a quarter after four to go to bed, you know, to, to get to go to work. So <laughs> yeah, if, if, this, if this was my job, if this was my job, yeah, I mean, I'd be up probably till midnight goofing around doing, you know, editing and talk, probably do another podcast after this one or whatever, you know. Um, but either way, the same thing, I write it down before I go to sleep or you, you know, just stay up and do it. But I mean, I'm thinking about it all, all the time, always, how can I improve? You know, how can I do this? I mean, people watching the stupid blue stuff around and, you know, and the logos and shit, that's cause I'm like, I needed to make it look better, make it look a little, you know, fancier, a little more zazzy or whatever. I don't know. Come up with a word for it. Just change it up. You know, just different things. And the virtual show, virtual show is a perfect example. If I wasn't always looking to improve, I could have just went, well, I guess we're not going to the virtual show. That's all right. We'll go next time or go to the St. Paul show. We'll just go next time. But I'm just like, what's going to bring the show to the next level? What are we going to get? How are we going to get more people to, to, you know, to tune in on Tuesday nights and listen to it, you know, on their favorite podcast player and stuff, just always improving. So, you know, and you with your boxes and small mouth box catfish box trout box keep adding 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 yeah very very creepily similar just two different products yeah and then once you once you're even there and once you're rolling you got to constantly tweak it you got to make mm -hmm. the box better and then look at the box itself and then look at how you're shipping and how your freight lures that are going in there and what kind of marketing you're doing and you know eventually we're going to put a pro staff program together and you know how, how all that's going to work and the, the amount of evolving that's going to happen with this is is forever, I would guess. You know, I mean, you're, right. it'll never stop evolving. Well, I mean, hell, it, it you could branch off into, you know, you could do California boxes where you're selling just big swim baits just to people in California, you know, or a flipping box here. You can get Seth Fighter to help you with a flipping box or whatever, you know. Uh, you know, you could get really, really specific with boxes too. But then it's... Once again, you get a walk before you can run and work your way into it and then grow and grow. And you don't want to blow your whole wad and then be like, well, what are we going to do now? I don't know. <laughs> uh, we have enough to keep us busy, I think, and, and be able to, you know, still be able to go fishing, which is yeah. like the number one thing. If I don't get to go fishing, I'm not going to want to do this. You yep. know, that's, that's still where the happy place is. But if I could be out on the ice and be able to do a video and be able to, you know, show some baits off and, uh, I'll still have a fish at the same time that day. I mean, I'm in. I'm in. I'm trying, trying to see what those baits were. Oh, here. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Show, show people an example of what you get. I mean, people, you know, we've talked about it, but show them what you're getting. I just got a handful. Well, let me rephrase that. I have a very large box of crimpets. Jesus, Mike. It's, <laughs> yeah. I'm going no, to dream, it's dream about that box. Uh, you know, one of the rough parts is I gotta put hooks on a lot of these guys and stuff. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Right there. How's that look? Uh -huh. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's a reef runner. Let's see. I got a Smithwick Rogue. Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> this is a bandit. Oh, see, that one would be killer on Lake of the Woods. Look at this. Man. And this came out of Ohio, and that's what's awesome, right? Right, right. right. What we're talking about. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, Curtis Funk says, uh, I have people that get real frustrated with me for quitting in the winter, but I have to, I have to quit or I can't fish. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, isn't the Arctic cool? This is, uh, this is all high tax right here. Yeah, and see, that's stuff I've, I've never seen in Minnesota. You get close, you get the three dots, you get some colors, but just different stuff from different areas. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Damn, look at that thing. Yeah, isn't that wild? Good yeah, let's see Lord. That's really cool green with sparkles on there. Oh, that's green on top? Oh, man. Yeah. All right, we got to stop looking at that. Otherwise, I'm just going to order every box and figure <laughs> out. Yeah. Uh, Joey says, uh, when I was coaching track and field, I used to tell my kids, you have to want it, but wanting it is not enough. You have to work for it. It's not enough just to want it. You have to work for it. Exactly. I mean, especially now we live in such a, a, a day and age of, you know, everybody just thinks that they're kind of owed something. You're not owed shit. You got to work for it, man. Especially if you want to live a happy life. And I think most, one of the problems is everybody wants to live that mtv fancy life well those people aren't happy i don't care what they say the kardashians at the end of the day might be happy quote unquote happy but are they really happy they're stressed out all the time they got to do tv shows and this and that and the other meanwhile i'm podcasting in my basement you're selling tackle and i'm pretty sure we're happier than most people that are actually rich and famous uh yeah well, don't get me wrong i'd like to have a ranger well yeah <laughs> I mean, we don't, I'm, just, I'm just saying you know yeah expectations of like what actually happiness is i mean yeah i'd love to have a ferrari next to a lambo next to an f450 next to a, a, a 35 foot boat of some sort next to a skeeter this and a ranger that and just you know have a yeah. giant garage full of toys but at the end of the day Dude, I need a truck that can haul a boat in a moderate. Did I pay my, did I pay my bills this month? Boom. Did I got food on the shelf. Yes. Are my kids happy? Right. Are we enjoying the family time? And that's that's worth more than a million dollars yeah. a month. Right. I mean, you you want, 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 but then it's like you work for all that shit and then you die just with stuff. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm all like, I'm going through this weird midlife crisis and I'm not even 40 yet of like, okay, what am I realistic? Like, how, how am I living? Like I'm living good. I got a wife. I got a couple of dogs. I got a truck and a boat and a house. I'm good. How much more do I really need? Like I want to retire happy, you know, and, and easy and early, but I don't know. I don't need to live the baller lifestyle right now. I'll just save some money and be humble, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm just oh, ranting and raving right now. Right. You got to enjoy the ride too, right? Someday exactly. you're going to be there and you're like, oh, well, what happened? Right. And well, maybe I can just have fun on the way there. What yeah. was it worth? Well, I'd, I'd rather spend all my money on crankbaits than, you know, stupid shit. Although some people would say crankbaits are stupid shit. <laughs> my wife, <laughs> don't you have enough of those stupid things? No, honey, I don't. They don't all catch fish all the time. My son and I, when we, <laughs> we'd go home and we'd sit in the driveway, we'd open up the boxes and take all the crankbaits out the boxes and put them. <laughs> oh yeah, it's probably watching this. They put them in the in the thirty six hundred box and so if she ever came like, oh I don't know how much got it, you know. Just <laughs> Roman, throw away the bag of the boxes. <laughs> like, here's the problem. So now my wife works at home now since COVID started. She's probably always just gonna work from home. They don't plan on bringing them ever, you know, back into the office anymore. So how the hell am I gonna sneak stuff in? I have to like keep it in my truck hidden. And you gotta do it in the driveway, Doug. There's no other way. You're gonna have to do it before it gets in the house. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, well, I gotta find a way to get it from the truck to the garage so she doesn't see me doing that transfer either because she's home. So she might be walking around and past the window. So now I gotta like wait for her to go to the grocery store or <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. It's tough for me to hide new stuff, but it's yeah. gonna have to have an incognito box show up to your house. To the brown <laughs> box. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, when you send me a box, just make sure you marked free of charge on it so she doesn't question. <laughs> <laughs> sample. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, sample. Every company that ever sends me anything, I don't care if it's Amazon or whatever, just write sample on it for me, please. Sample. Yeah. She, doesn't, she doesn't really watch this, so I can get away with saying stuff like this. So, Although this will be the, the moment she does watch. Love you, honey. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh. man. 
let's see. That's that's how it is when we go to the bait shop. No self control. I'm telling you. Like I I've, I've been I was at just I was at Shields the other day. Cause I'm like, eh, I'll just kind of go see what happened, you know, see what's down there. And then I'll go to the mall, do some Christmas shopping. I was looking, well, actually I went down there cause I was looking for that new otter, um, uh, sidekick. The, yeah. This new sidekick caddy. I got one. Fantastic. Love it already. Haven't even actually used it out there. Well, I stroll through the baits and shit. Next thing you know, I'm walking out with a couple of Northland baits that I've already got four of them, same color, but I'm like, oh, I can't, you know, run out of these whatever I and, oh yeah the one thirty second ounce here's a hot tip bluegills people one thirty second ounce forage minnow and purple there you go there there you go that's the bluegills love them um but i got a handful of that i got a handful of some sort of plastics i think i got some more plastics uh bought because because you know originally that new micro is z viber right the micro micro one yeah we got a, there's our custom pain right you oh, don't tell me that. <laughs> I just not, set them off today, actually. Because this is this is how dumb I am, right? So I'm like, I got the black one, I got the the white glow, and then I got kind of like the bluegillish pattern on, right? That realistically should cover me. But since I'm there, I'm like, hmm, okay. I walked out with seven more different colors. I don't know why. There's like two pinks. There's like two pinks, three different bait fish. I'm like, they all look similar but they're just different enough that maybe that shade might be the difference right here's here's how bad i am (laughs) i'm not that bad anymore but when i was walleye fit you know tournaments i would go to this this store and let's say shad wrap fire tiger shad wrap right well i need a couple of those so i'd take two of those and wait that one's a slightly different green slightly different green just slightly different like it was a the end of the paint run or something weird right huh so there i am taking all the fire tigers off the shelf and looking at all the shades and i'm like okay i'll get those two there those two look a little different that one i think has an extra stripe on it so i'll take that one <laughs> like what am i doing it's a fire tiger shad wrap the fish don't care and i got a dozen of the damn things because <laughs> there's different shades and then they all <laughs> Then they well, all get thrown. They all get thrown in the tank. That's box. what it is, right? Sometimes it's just yeah. that little, little thing that's different that, for whatever reason, it just turns it on yeah, until that, you lose that bait. Right. Yeah, you know, that's what I tell her, and she's like, "Yeah, whatever." Anyway, just give me a pink one, and I'll be fine. So it's not hard to walk down the aisle and load the card up. I mean, I bet you dropped a couple hundred bucks without even blinking an eye. Oh, f- dude, yeah. it's ridiculous. Well, I spent eighty bucks, eighty or ninety bucks, just. That shield off of stuff I literally did not need at all. Wasn't planning on buying. It's stupid. It's a sickness. I got the same problem. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, well, yeah it's, a, it's a sickness, and now apparently you are our dealer. So thanks a lot. <laughs> it happened to be so. <laughs> Speaking of a sample box, you got a sample box? <laughs> I need some more of that sample boxes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was telling Gary I've worked because we. A lot of the baits come in and we bag a lot of them for them. So we'll kind of send them in bulk and we'll put their sticker on it and, and whatnot. But, you know, we're sitting around the table and we got like hundreds of baggies everywhere. We're bagging all these little jigs by themselves and the plastics and juicing them. And I'm like, ah, oh, this, uh, this is, I never thought I'd be peddling baits like this. This is <laughs> the whole world. Do you have a scale there too, just for yeah. shit and giggles? <laughs> scale, a couple yeah. of razor blades, straw. Well, i got to make sure the. Got to make sure the jigs at one thirty. You know, that's the right weight. <laughs> oh man, no, it's, it's oh. crazy. It's fun. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's that whole thing. Of like, oh, I'll buy crankbaits, or I could buy drugs. I buy crankbaits. I'm good. Oh, it's a safer way to go. Yeah. Hey, so uh, let everybody know what the prices are on these boxes before we forget about it. Sure. Um, boxes. We have about three different levels. We've got a silver box, which is forty nine ninety five. We have the gold, which is ninety nine ninety five, and the platinum, which is one hundred and ninety nine ninety five. Uh, it's free shipping on all the all the um, platinum boxes. And right now, if you um, order our special mystery mystery box, that's got free shipping on it as well. And there's also some extra little surprise gifts in that uh, in that combo box. But we basically have the, the three levels. I mean, as you just said, dropping a hundred bucks is pretty easy to do. 
Um, and we believe that that you know hundred dollar gold level box, you're going to get more if you were to go drop a hundred bucks in a retail store. Definitely going to get more baits. Right. Right. Well, you get you get ten ten baits in a hundred dollar box, right? Oh, you get more now. Yeah. So there you go. It's worth it. And that's the thing. I mean, yeah, fifty bucks a month. But I mean, you can just buy a box and here and a box there. But if you do the subscription, yeah. fifty bucks a month. You it's not. It on. Yeah, you can turn it on, turn it off, or you know, yeah. just buy it one time. So each season yeah. comes up. Hey, you know, this month I'm going to buy a box and we'll load up. Right. I mean, fifty bucks is not cheap. That's a good chunk of change. But you are, and like I said, I've. Chris Wojcik, Tony Tessing, they've all told me, plus some other people, they've all told me, they go, dude, yes, it is 100% worth the money. You're getting the value. You're getting more than you're spending. So it's not a mystery tackle box from XYZ company for bass, like we said before, that you're getting two packs of cheap-ass hooks, and it costs you $15, but you're only getting like $8 worth of actual value. So... Yeah, it's it's you know it's not cheap, but if if it's worth it, it's worth it. And, and well, we we came up with fifty bucks because, and this is the the thing that we've been talking about. I could do a thirty five dollar box, but I was always disappointed when I got these other boxes how many baits and lures that were in. Right. So I said, all right, let's charge a little bit more money. Let's add the custom factor into it. So when you open the box, you're like, wow. There's a lot of stuff in here, and I'm going to be able to use all this stuff. Yep. And it's it just so for an extra, you know, I think the most expensive box on, on the subscription is about 35, 40 bucks. So we're only 10, 15 dollars more a month. Right. I mean, what is that? Two more baits? Well, you're going to get probably four or five more baits in that box because of that extra 15 dollars. Yep. Yep. Well, shit. <laughs> the custom crankbaits, like I said. So if you go to Cabela's, and I bought the, the Warrior custom baits. They're fourteen or fifteen dollars a piece. So there are three of them for forty-five bucks. We'll say three of them. Yep. So we'll say four for fifty. And if you're getting more than four for fifty, you're good to go. So yeah, no, it's 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 yeah. No, I get it. It's awesome. Um, John Bolton says a one-pound propane bottle cost me seventy-five dollars every time I go to Fleet Farm to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> i feel you uh-huh uh curtis funk um and this is true my baits are not cheap no kurt does not as his, his baits are not cheap even just tungsten jigs but his quality is good um and just to be honest justin doesn't get that big of a break the boxes are a great value yeah i mean that's the thing with these custom guys man it's you're not just buying shad wraps and reef runners you're buying custom painted hand painted stuff so Yep. Are you frozen? No, we're good. No, oh, we go. okay. Well, geez, wiggle around a little bit. I'm like, good lord, is he frozen? <laughs> I got this phone. like ring light on my around my phone, and it's kind of hypnotizing me right now. Oh. <laughs> oh, is that why you look so good tonight? The ring oh, light. Oh, uh, I, I don't know if you're ever on TikTok or not. I, I just became a huge fan. It's I think it's hilarious some of the stuff that you see on there. And so I've been, we have a channel on TikTok. And, um, Dude, I've been seeing everybody use the lights. And so I just, I had to order one from Amazon. And man, I, their quality is awesome. Well, I think as a matter of fact, uh, I'm on TikTok, yes. I think as a matter of fact, I might follow you uh let's see i don't follow a whole lot of people well i follow enough but i think i think i do i can't remember i don't know i follow people and then i unfollow them so then there's a bunch of stuff on top so but i saw your tiktok yeah it's just something you know if people always rip on tiktok but it there's so much funny shit on there that it's oh, ridiculous there it's it's just stupid and the fishing stuff there's actually some good fishing content like really good fishing content on there there is you'd be surprised that's kind of what when it first brought me into it was i had saw some of that content i'm like well well if you guys are on there i gotta check mm -hmm. it out but you got you know we've got tiktok we've got twitter we've got um instagram we've got youtube we've got facebook there's just so much to kind of manage with all of it kind of drive the guy a little bit sometimes. so I got all these apps here. I don't know how well you can see all these apps and like the top two thirds of the freaking thing is all different social media stuff. It's ridiculous. There's so many little apps and there's so many apps out there. It's stupid. It's getting out of hand a little bit and trying to manage all that. And, you know, if you're doing some marketing or advertising on it too, it's, it's, <laughs> that's like a whole nother realm of what we're doing is trying to even deal with that whole piece. 
Dude, I'm the worst social media guy ever. Like, I could be doing so much more stuff for my podcast, and I'm like, eh, I'll just go live once a week, share a couple things from some sponsors. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> I just well, I'm, you're you're growing naturally too. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You let right. your your product, which is you, yeah, um, speak for itself, and you're letting it grow on its own. You know, I got to push it a little bit more because I, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a little bit behind in the game. And so the, for us, we want to have be able to have impressions on you know five different platforms. Yeah, they got to see it four or five times before you actually make the purchase. Right. right. Well, and that's, and that's the thing that like people don't understand. They're like, Oh God, I see it all the time. I see it all the time. I see this all the time. Well, yeah, that's because you might see it all the time because you're already following them. But in order to hit everybody, you got to post multiple times a day, different days, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. It's such a, it's such a pain in the ass. I just can't stand it. And I, the, the, until I can actually afford to somebody to do it, then I'm not going to, I'm just going to keep like half-assing it and see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, right now it's, it's me wearing the hat. But yeah, eventually we'd love to have somebody managing all that for us. Someday we'll get to that point. But right now, I, I kind of also like the control of our our creativity of what we're doing, and you know, right. having fun with the TikToks and you know, turning those into Facebook ads. And, yeah, you know, I think we put DMX uh, music on those some Christmas lights the other day. It was, you know, hilarious. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there's a couple. Have you seen? Uh, God, what was it? There was one where there was these two trees talking to each other. Yeah. yeah. Good Lord. People are going crazy with Christmas lights. Like, I like Christmas lights, but people are going way too high tech. It's almost not Christmas anymore. It's like some sort of weird, like, Tron movie. I don't know. Yeah, we went to, uh, we took the kids and went to Valley Fair. They had that light show there in the parking lot. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's 35 bucks a car. Which I was a little hesitant on thirty five bucks to drive through some lights, but it was it was pretty cool. Huh? It's See the, the I think it's the Minnesota Zoo. Me and the wife are actually doing something similar. They got some sort of light display thing going on, and you pay per car or whatever. And I, they only have so many tickets available, and she got it. So we're going to be doing that. I think on Christmas evening or something. So Christmas, Christmas, oh. Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. I don't know at night. Yeah, it was fun. We we dug it. It was I was pretty pretty impressed. Of course, by the time I'm done, I'm going, well, how can I do this? Can I get these lights? Can I find a parking lot to do this? Right. <laughs> My wife's like, just enjoy it, would you? <laughs> I know. As yeah, dude, I'm telling you, I could be anywhere. Like, well, me and the wife, we're in Disney World, and me and Patrick are on the phone talking about the virtual show. <laughs> Well, you know, it's just, like, it's a sickness. You just, yeah. You're constantly pushing and, you know, you got to take the time that you can. And, I don't know. I just, yeah. Well, find something you love to do and put all it, put, you know, everything you can into it and you never know what happens. I don't know. You got to try, right? Exactly. Try it. Take that jump. Take that leap. Go watch that Steve Harvey clip about jumping or whatever it's called. And it'll get you motivated into doing something. So that, or just listen to Gary V all the time. He'll he'll get you motivated or annoyed. I don't know. I <laughs> now that I've now that I don't need much motivate. Well, I still need motivation, but I don't need that initial motivation. I can't listen to Gary V because he just says three things: go do it, screw everybody else, and just do what you want. I'm like, okay, I'm like okay, <laughs> all right, all right, Gary. Got anything, got anything else for me, Gary? Uh, no. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anywho, uh, let's see. I think we kind of covered a little bit. Was there anything else with season tackle you wanted to talk about? No, no. We just we got the holiday promotion going on. Uh, we just sent out a ton of blanks. So we got new rounds of stuff going to painters, and those guys are sending that stuff back. I've got about nine hundred lures. I got to put hooks on over the next uh, few weeks. Just kind of getting that piece ready for the springtime and. Um, uh, excited to go fishing and be able to take some of these, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I've been cherry picking these baits and I have put myself together with an awesome box of my favorite ones. And <laughs> I'm uh, clearly excited to go use them. I'm hoping this week we can finally get out on the ice and, um, you know, just start rocking and rolling and maybe get, you know, up North a little, really far North. Hey, we'll see. Make I the, don't make the See, I don't think we have to go that far north. I'm only going about an hour, hour fifteen away, so it's not that far. Oh, well, that's not bad. 
Yeah. Uh, I heard uh, Mille Lacs and the Bays got uh, about yep. six, seven inches of the Bays right now, so we're just going to be hitting there, too. Yeah, if it's... Uh, Robert Carginas was doing a video. Um, those Steve... guys were out. Yeah, Steve Johnson from Johnson's Portside, he he went live, I think, today or yesterday talking about it. So, Yeah, then I saw the video of the ice moving from Mille Lacs. Did you see that? Or no. The wind was blowing the ice. It was like going along the shoreline. It was it was crazy. I'll have to, I'll have to send that video to you. It was, it was nuts. Dude, so and, I hope that all locked up. And that's the problem with that with big bodies of water like that, Red Lake, Leech Lake, Lake of the Woods. Is you got to have it solid capped and pray for no wind. Otherwise, it's going to move and you're going to be separated from shore with nowhere to go. Yeah, well, if you keep the keep the snow off and just get cold for a couple of weeks, we should be good to go. Yeah, I don't think there's much snow in the forecast. Nope, it look cold. It's going to be cold at night, especially up north. So I think we're, you know, right after Christmas, we should be golden. Let's see here. What's the next uh, the next 10 days? Let's see. 37 on Friday with a little bit of snow. Um, 37s, 40s. The lows are all below freezing, so that's good. Oh, next Thursday. Next Thursday. Not, not this next coming on, but 24th, Christmas Eve. 11 degrees for the high. Ooh, here it comes. That yeah, yeah so Wednesday, Wednesday night dips down to three three degrees. Thursday is 11 for the high and then dips back down to four degrees at night. So, yeah, perfect. Because I'm going to Lake of the Woods the following weekend. So, I'll well, be there. Good. Yeah. Be oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Lake of the Woods, I think, has already got, what, six, eight inches, something like that up there? Yeah, we're hoping to make a run uh, there, too. We got a got a little reservation for a wheelhouse because i am not a fan of towing my shack all the way up there it's just too it's a yep. long drive towing ice house i do not want to we did it three times last year and i just don't want to do it again it was tough well you end up spending as much money towing a house as you would have just renting one <sighs> that's that's what we're talking about you put all the gas in there and then the stress of pulling it and you know, once you pass Red Lake, there's that stretch of road there that is so dangerous. Every year you see guys spinning out. And mm-hmm. I just, uh, you know, I don't really want to go any farther north than, you know, maybe Lake Winnie, uh, which I'm excited to ice fish again this year, too. You know, I've never been to Winnie, like, period. Open water, hard water, really? nothing. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I, I love that lake. I um, go out of High Banks Resort quite a bit, and uh, I've had 20, 30 fish days easy okay um, you know i fish right along the shoreline of high banks right there pulling cranks or down south near denny's and i've had some really good days and i've had a few tough ones too where we drilled more holes than i could count and it's just you know <laughs> <laughs> just happened sometimes like we didn't put the effort in so we didn't do that it just, just wasn't happening well shit that doesn't matter where you're at you can have great days and shitty days <laughs> on the same lake uh-huh. two days in a row <laughs> <laughs> But I, I, I love I love winning. I actually got to fish leech uh, when I, I was up at girls camp for uh, about a month and a half. And um, during the day, I had to go fishing every day. And uh, oh, poor you. Yeah, it was real tough. So I got to my <laughs> my food up up there. Got to take me to uh, to leech and actually put me on a couple of guide trips. And man, it was leech is pretty cool lake. I I dig it. I'm excited to hit that too. Dude, leech leech is a lake that. <sighs> I've had a couple of eh, uh, okay days on, but that lake just kicks my ass. Like when I do catch a fish, it's like a 24 plus, you know, but other than that, I don't know what it is. I think this next year I got to get up there a few times and try it again, but it just has my number. I can't figure it out really other than Creek Chubbs, uh, Riggin Creek Chubbs and Walker Bay. Other than that, I can't figure out nothing there. It just, it, it just it's that lake for me like i can figure i've pretty much figured out everywhere else like i can go have numbers but leech lake and numbers of fish i can't find them i don't know just got you huh? yeah like i said if i catch one it's like 24 better which cool yeah great but fish. i want to go out and spend eight hours catching fish not a fish <laughs> you put all that time and gas and out there fishing all day. The worst, last thing you want to do is just be that one fish in that blank, man. It's just so defeating. Oh, dude, we, right fished, we fished that lake. I think three years I fished it. I think it was, was it, well, tournament days. I think we had two years where it was back to back, like four or five tournaments pre fishing before that. And I think the most I've ever caught in a day is maybe 10, maybe. And they weren't even that good. 
So I don't know. I lucked out. Mike, Mike, I mean, <laughs> a guy that was already all pre fishing. He's like, meet me at the dock. I figured it out. You know? Perfect. <laughs> I need that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I need that guy. I lucked oh, out. Yeah. Well, that's the, you know, and that's the thing about fishing. You never know. Some lakes, you know, it's, it's like when you've got, um, uh, uh, in baseball, you got a pitcher and a batter. Sometimes you just have a pitcher that's got your number and you cannot get a hit off of them, but you can get a hit off of that guy and to that guy and that guy, but that Greg Maddox motherfucker, I cannot get a, a hit off of him at all. And I hate his guts, but I respect him at the same time. Same thing with Leach. I hate it. And I respect it at the same time. Someday I'm going to go up there and I'm hit home run and then I'm never going to go there again. I'm done. I had that with Lake Winnebago in Wisconsin. I absolutely despise that lake. <laughs> We've all got one. Oh, man. I fished the multiple NWTs in that lake, and I, just, I don't get it. I just I can't I can't figure that lake out. You know, yeah. I, I've caught fish, but it seems like every time the tournament day started, it was like, well, everything we did all week worked great, but today, ah, sorry, it's not happening. <laughs> right. Well, that's because the wind switched 14 degrees out of the southeast and it got one degree colder or something. Nobody <laughs> always figures it out, but I, I don't know. That lake's kind of got my number right now. I've, I've just had a tough time with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, somebody always figures it out. That's tournament fishing. They, they always do. There's always a winner and there's always a loser, and I end up somewhere far, far in between there. So. <laughs> <laughs> So it's fun though, isn't it fun? I just it's just a oh, blast. It's I'm, blast. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Like a, I just made a design a shirt design that says, I'm just happy to be out here. <laughs> 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 I'm just happy to be out here. That's uh exactly. how much are the sweatshirts? Uh I don't know. They're like uh depends on the shirt. There's a bunch, there's a few couple different styles. They're like 35, 40 bucks or something. Okay, cool. I'm gonna so. have to. I'm gonna yeah. have to you know, buy that game changer one. I'm gonna have to order it when we get out there. Yeah, there's two different there's two different styles. I know there's one because one might not have many sizes, but the other one goes up to I think four X, five X anyway, something like that. Cool. So well, I'm gonna uh, I think we we'll wrap it up. I think we, well, hey, and we figured something out. Okay, so we were gonna do this just in case anybody was wondering, we were gonna do this last week with Justin, but this was the problem. This little st- stinking thing right here this is what plugs into my camera or my camera runs into a cord and then i don't know if anybody can see it but this plugs into yeah this thing after a year and some change and then putting it on having it on for 28 hours or whatever it was over the weekend it finally gave up the goat my camera did not turn off once since we've been on so it was definitely this so yeah there we go got it oh well <laughs> and i should have known it because i had the can uh, i i had that issue kind of sort of on a few episodes before the live show and i didn't really think much of it i thought it was just connectivity issues but nope it was this so i would just like to say thank you for the camp to the cam link for being an, uh, a great friend and you should all thank it for having me show up every week or don't hate it too i don't know whatever <laughs> <laughs> well, we got that figured out. I didn't go. A camera didn't go out. So hey, well, we figured yeah, something. Yeah. Uh, and we're doing a giveaway too now, right? We're still doing. When are you doing that? On the twenty second? Uh, I got to Well, I didn't go last week. I think this week and then next week when people when I go live, people share. So we'll actually be drawing it the next week. So yeah. Okay. So this, so everybody share this live stream right now. Go back and share the last couple from the actual podcast. I don't care. Uh, everybody gets to share it. You get entered in. We're giving away. Which box are we giving away? We're going to give them a gold box of their choice. A gold box. Awesome. Nice. A hundred dollar box of their choice. They can do the mystery mystery, the panfish, cream paint, or the walleye. They get to pick whatever they want. Awesome. hundred dollar mystery box, panfish, walleye, whatever you want. Awesome. So share it right now. Then everybody will come in and we're going to go be like, bye. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, so, yeah. So we'll give that away in a couple weeks. We'll announce the winner in a couple weeks. Like I said, I think next week will be the last week of the sharing for it. I'll just have to go back and see how many we did. Um, but, yeah, other than that, this has been kind of weird for me to, to do a because it's been like a couple weeks since I did a show, an actual like just me and a guest show. It's it was kind of weird. <laughs> I'm so used to talking to so many people and having other guys in here. And man, it's crazy. So, all right. Well, we're back in the saddle.
Okay. Well, Justin, I appreciate it. Um, tell people websites, socials, all that good yep. stuff. Uh, go to seasonstackle.com. You can find us, Season Tackle, hashtag Season Tackle on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, every one of them. You just type in Season Tackle, you're going to find us. Awesome. All right. Well, I appreciate it, sir. And uh, everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thanks to our guest, Justin from Seasons Tackle. And uh, yeah, thank you to all of you that came out and watched us and Justin during the uh, the virtual show. So uh, we'll be back next week, Tuesday, 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. See everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>